Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Let's see what's making news. Today is Ida Hobbit, or the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia. Jack caught up with some students to find out what it means to them. Meet some of the members of Henley High's Prism Club. So it's a club for queer kids and allies. It's where they have like a safe space to just like be themselves really and not be judged and everything really. The club organises school events to raise awareness and show support for other LGBTQIA plus students. Recently, they've been putting together pride ribbons for Ida Hobbit. Ida Hobbit is the International Day Against LGBTQ plus discrimination. So the name Ida Hobbit is actually an acronym, which includes homophobia, biphobia, interphobia and transphobia. Ida Hobbit marks the day when homosexuality was removed from the World Health Organization classification of diseases. For a long time, people who were gay or had different gender identities faced discrimination, even violence. And in many places, including Australia, people could be arrested for who they were. Biologically, it was considered that it was unnatural and therefore a disease, something that could be cured. Making it a disease meant that you could also criminalise it and keep it out of the public sphere. A lot has changed since then, thanks to the many people who fought for the rights of LGBTQIA plus people. But discrimination still exists. For young people, it's two and three LGBTQ plus young people still experience discrimination. It's the reason why Adrian and many others say days like Ida Hobbit are important to celebrate. There's nothing wrong with anyone who doesn't know what their identity is. My advice would be to find people who genuinely support you. Now to the world of elephants, where a new study has found out all the ways they say hello to each other. <laughs> Here's Ren. Hello. People greet each other in lots of different ways. Hey, Amelia. Hey, Ren. Hey, Sass. Hey, Ren. Hey, Nat. But we're not the only ones. In fact, it turns out our grey, wrinkly friends in the animal world do too. <laughs> You see, a group of researchers have been studying African elephants in Zimbabwe and they've documented about 20 different types of elephant greetings. When the separate and reunited elephants uh, used a lot of different movements, they flapped their ears, they spread their ears, they reached with the trunk. And depending on whether the elephants were facing one another, determined what kind of greeting they would use. They do target their gestures at their recipients using visual ones when the recipient is looking at them and uh, audible ones or the ones that involve touch with the recipient when they weren't. The study also found that smell plays an important role in greetings. So uh, that's why you might notice a lot of elephants greeting each other like this. <laughs> yeah. But despite the smelly hello, experts say it's all really just a sign of affection. When they touch each other, they're extremely cautious and gentle and they, and they just are, are so loving to each other. They should be an example for us. Oh, come on guys, group hug! <laughs> Every dog has its day. That's a famous saying that basically means, um, well, you know, dogs, right? Yeah, so dogs, they're all going to have a day. That's what that means, right? First up to Daisy, the Italian water dog, who's been specially trained to sniff out a critically endangered fungus, the tea tree finger fungus. And so far, they've only been found in six spots around Victoria. And the hope is that dogs like Daisy can make the process of finding them even easier. Now to police dog Rousseau, the Belgian Malinois, who's just become Nottinghamshire Police's latest recruit. What makes police dog Rousseau here super special is that he was actually a stray. But after eight weeks of training, he's now an absolute professional. And finally, uh, to a very peculiar looking dog. Okay, no, no, it's actually just a raccoon invading the pitch here at a soccer match in the US. We need to find him a ball because he's moving very well in the centre of midfield. I'm going to call this raccoon Jack because Jack was both nimble and quick, managing to escape capture multiple times before finally meeting his match. They got him! They got the raccoon! That's all from us this week. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs> you look different. Hang on a second.